And Allah Azawajal, He promised that He would help you when He said, Inna Allah la'a muhsineen. Indeed, Allah is with the good doers. Now, so from the, the, the doing of good or from the good things, is striving to be better. Striving to be better. What does this mean? This means that we have to accustom our souls. We have to accustom our souls because our souls are accustomed to staying home and chilling. Our, custom, our souls are accustomed to not reading the Quran every day. Our souls are accustomed to not remembering Allah every day. Our souls have been accustomed to doing everything else except for that which we should be busying ourselves with. So now we have to make ourselves, we have to force ourselves to do that which is right. And this takes some striving and some sacrifice. <laughs> From a hadith collected by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, Fudal ibn Ubayd, Radiallahu anhu, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al Mujahidu bin Jahida nafsahu fi sabilillah azza wa jalla. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, The Mujahid, Naam, the one who did the, the true striver. The, the Mujahid is the one who fights or strives against his own soul for the sake of Allah Azza Now, strives against his own desires. Because there are other things that we desire to do that we should let go. It's detrimental. Now, but we've been doing it so long, when we stop doing that thing, it calls to us anyway. It calls us to come and hang out. It calls us to be with these other people. It calls us to be in places that we shouldn't be. It calls on us when we turn our back on it. So there has been some real striving. So the Prophet suddenly said, the real Mujahid, the, the one who's truly involved in jihad, is the one who's fighting against itself. Now, you sit and talk with a smoker and find out how, how difficult it is for them to get away from that nicotine that has grabbed them by their throat and they can't let it go. Now, and this is why you can't just leave something for the sake of your health. Well, I'm going to leave this for my health. It's a possibility that, that you may return. I'm going to go back. I'm going to leave this thing for my business. I'm going to leave this thing for my family. I'm going to leave this thing because I keep getting in trouble. Those are good reasons to leave things that's causing us difficulty. But the main reason why we should leave something is for the sake of Allah is much out. And Allah promised if you do that, if you strive in His cause, He'll help you. He'll aid you. From the example, Sheikh of Dorf Man, the here, this tafsir, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, as an example, whoever strives hard, to seek knowledge for the sake of Allah Azawajal will attain guidance and divine help to achieve his goals to that which he's striving for. And Allah Azawajal will extend, extend his efforts, Allah Akbar, and give him beyond that which he sought. Allah Akbar. Then the Shaykh he finishes by saying, this means and if a person seeks knowledge for the sake of Allah, Allah will make it easier for him to attain it. Because of what? Because of his sincerity and striving. Now, this is just an example of what happens when you strive for the sake of Allah as a wajah. So whatever it is you, you, you want to leave. Now, if you want to leave music and start listening to the Quran more, do it for the sake of Allah. Allah is going to make it easy for you. He's going to cause your heart to love one of the Quran. The, the, the reciters of the Qur'an, now, uh, me in, 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 in all of these uh, beautiful reciters. And that thing will start to sound better to you than any hip-hop they created. Now, you leave those friends in, in places for the sake of Allah, 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 Allah will replace them with better friends and keep you in a better place. Now, because you did it for Allah, Allah is going to help you. He's going to aid you in your change. Now, he's going to aid you in becoming better. 
Now, he's going to raise your levels in degrees. As Allah says, he said, Allah raises in levels and degrees those who not to get a pat on the back, not for money. Now, they are doing this to get closer to Allah as much as obtaining knowledge. They are attaining knowledge so that they can remove ignorance from themselves and if they're married and their families, so that they can see the face of Allah as much as It's the only reason why and to save themselves from Jahannam, from the hellfire. It's the only reason. There's no other reason. I was saying, Abdul Razak, that which is pleasing to Allah as a Now, nah? we have to accustom ourselves, meaning that we have to have knowledge of what it is that pleases Allah as a You have to know this, and you have to know what it is that will bring upon you the anger of Allah as a Now, so whatever it is that's going to anger Allah, you have enough sense. As the intellectual man, the man who has intellect, he should have or she should have enough sense to stay away from those things that anger Allah as much as. And if in fact they should fall into those things, they have enough sense and enough taqwa and enough iman to make toba, to ask Allah to forgive them and they return back to the straight path. So the Prophet Indeed, the children of Adam, they fall into error. They, they make sins. But he said the best of them, the best of the children of Adam who fall into sin are those who make tawbah, are those who turn to Allah in repentance. And even when you make a mistake and you turn to Allah in repentance, this is proof that you're going to be better because you did something better because of the mistake you made to purify yourself so that you can move on. The fact that you feel bad about the sin <laughs> is proof that you want to be better than where you are right now. None of us standing here or sitting here or upstairs should feel comfortable in your heart. I'm good with my deen. I feel comfortable with my deen. I know everything I need to know about Islam. If there's anybody who feels like that, know that shaitan has tricked you. And you have become complacent and neglectful and lazy. And these are the signs of the hypocrite, the Munaf. May Allah protect us from this man. <coughs> With that being understood, and that is that we have to do those things that are pleasing to Allah and stay away from those things that brings about his anger. You know, like when we recite the Surah Al Fatiha. Now, at the end, about those people who have went astray and those who have gained the anger of Allah, as we tell all of the Fatiha is just asking Allah not to make us like those people five times a day. With that being mentioned, it becomes clear to us that there are some things that we have to look at and know that we have to remove them out of our lives if they are preventing us from getting into paradise. If they are preventing us from getting into paradise. If they are preventing us from getting into paradise. This is how you have to look at it. Or if it's going to bring down on me the anger of the law as a general. There are a few issues that have to be looked at. One, removing people from us. Certain people, not everybody. Removing places from us, meaning we don't go to certain places. And removing things that we have going on in our lives in order for us to be successful. Some examples. We have the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu as it relates to people. The Prophet Sallallahu said in hadith of Ibai Abi Dawood, hadith of Great Hassan Ibn Mani, Rahimullah, a rabbi of Al-Adeen al-Hadid, fa yandur ahadaku men yukhadi. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, a man is on the religion of his friend. I want that to soak in. 
And just because it says man here, it means women. So the brothers, we have to know that you are upon the religion of your friend. Whoever your friend is, you and him are upon the same team. Whoever your friend is among the sisters, you and them are upon the same team. So whatever you see in them that you don't like, you hate them. You with them all the time. You eat with them. You have conversations with them on the phone. You travel with him. But you see some things about him you don't like. A Khalili, a man is on the religion of his friend. You see, this is the same statement as birds of a feather flock together. You know, the people who are upon the same stuff, they do it. So like the people who are trying to learn this religion, you're going to find those people together. Whether it's Arabic, whether it's the Quran, they memorize the Hadith, or they come into the classes during the week, you're going to find those people always together. And the people who aren't really studying that much, well, let's go to second level. Those who are studying and kind of concerned about their religion a little bit, all those people hang together. Then the lesser of them, then the lesser of them. You know, the ones who are still hanging out in the corner, smoking, listening to hip hop, all those people hang together. They support one another. That's your dean. That's not the dean of Islam. And we're not saying that you're not Muslims. That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is that's not the dean of Islam. Huh? What we're doing and what we're practicing. So this shows us that our dean, our way of life, is not a religion. A religion is something that you do on Sunday and then you boogie down in the club on Friday. That's religion. A religion is something that you can have, hang it up and take it down. This is a way of life, meaning you're doing this thing every waking moment of your life. You wake up and you make fun of the messenger. Now, you think a law and you're reading and you're remembering a law, but this is all day long. It's not part time. How, how, how are we going to become successful part time? Doesn't happen. So look, the verse that says, he said, a man is on the religion of his friend. So let one of you look to who his friend is. Now, so this means that the people, the three people, the two people, the, 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 the five people, they should all turn and look at each other. Perhaps they tell them, look, if you only have one friend, so this I only have one friend. Okay, both of you need to look at each other. Take a look. And whatever you see, that's what you've been putting up with. If your friend, when, when you and him are talking, he curses, and you don't say anything, you just made it okay. And I'm talking about all the four little words that are used on the street. Every single one of them. If you have a friend, and you're talking with him, and he's cursing, and like, or he does some kind of sin in front of you, you don't say anything, that's a reflection of you. Listen, you have to understand that the friends that you have are a reflection of who you are. Just like when you have wives and children, your children are a reflection of who you are. So if in the house they're praying, and when it comes time to pray, even if it's a little, little baby, and they're praying in the house, when it comes time to pray in the masjid, that child at least, the least, will stand next to the parent and do kiyam and walk away. That's proof that, that those people pray in the house. Or that child will make sujood, if nothing else. That child will go down against sujood, that's who said, oh, they pray in that house. Because the, this, this, this activity is not foreign to the child. <laughs> now, so you have to look at who your friends are, who you take as friends. And if you want to be better, then you got to choose people who are trying to be better or who are better than you. It's the only way you're going to get better. As it relates to the places, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the authentic hadith collected by Imam Muslim, Ahabdu al Balad, Ibn Allahi wa Sayyidi Duhan, wa Abghadu, wa Abghadu Balad al Biladi, Ibn Allahi as wa Duhan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ahabdu he said the most beloved places to Allah on earth is the messages. It's the message where we are right now. It's the most beloved place to Allah. 
And he said, the most hated place to Allah is what tell? As Suq is the marketplace. Being in the marketplace. This doesn't mean you can't go buy things. I said, then now the people think, oh, I can't go to the mall. No, I feel hype. How are you going to get your shoes? You got to go to the mall. You got to go downtown Palestine to buy whatever. You have to go to the marketplace. But why is this being said? The Shai Yudhaim Sunna said, the reason for this, the reason why the Sukh is the worst place is because there are some slick and conniving things that go on there. People lie to sell stuff. They try and cheat people out of their money. They charge them over that which the thing really is. Huh? The person buying, sometimes they come with some slick stuff. Trying to get a bargain and even lesser than that. You know? Especially the Muslims. The Muslims like to come and buy from the Muslims and say to him, where's the Muslim bargain? There is no Muslim bargain. Stop doing that. Stop putting pressure on the Muslims. Why would you walk into the store of a Muslim? That man has a family. And the first thing you, you, you want to walk in, you don't want to pay the regular price for nothing. What kind of foolishness is this? I'm looking for the Muslim saying, well, then you came into the wrong Muslim store. You should, you should be walking into the Muslim business trying to think about how much money I got that I can give this man and support him for the sake of Allah. Because if I take care of him, Allah's going to take care of me. And if, in fact, in the midst of the transaction, he says to me, I'm going to take off some tax. I'm going to take off $5. Then that's what the law is on, Jeff. But you don't find that type of dealing in the masjid. There's nobody trying to get over on anybody. You find the reading of the Quran. You find the muhadara, the classes. You find people making dhikr. Now you find the people learning, reciting Quran. Now I'm praising of Allah and raising his name high on the earth. That's the only thing you find in the masajid. Even though there may be some slippery slick Muslim in the masjid, may Allah forgive him, who come in looking to beg when they have. Now, that's another hope. But generally, this place is Allah's house. And he loves them. So if the brother said, you know, I, I used to hang out with so-and-so, we used to hang out on this street or on that corner of this place, those are the worst places to hang out. Any corner in Paris, any street, any block is the worst place for you to be. The best place for you to be is in those places that Allah loves. So the young, you know, the, 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 the Shabbat, you want to hang out with one another? Okay, say, listen, I'll meet you at the masjid for Mughra. I'll meet you at the masjid for Isha. I'll meet you at the masjid for Duhu. I'll meet you at the masjid for Asr. I'll meet you at the masjid for Fajr. We can hang out, we can chill. This is the best place. This is the best place to come and lay down and go to sleep. Wallahi, when you come in the masjid, you forget all about that dunya. It leaves you all of your problems, all of your worries, everything, because this is how the life of the uh, uh, the, the, the hospital. This is a place where you come to, 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 to get healed. Now, huh? after getting all those battle scars out there in that place, everything coming at you, what you see, what you hear, subhanAllah. You can't even walk past people nowadays and hear decent speech. Everybody's cursing saying what they're going to do to each other, all kinds of craziness. And then you come in here, you hear somebody reciting the Quran. You hear some brothers discussing ahadith. Yeah? Or there's a class going on. Or it's just absolutely quiet. Lovely. And that's done so that you can gather yourself. Like today, we have Yom Jum'ah, so, so we can recharge our batteries and go back out and deal with all of that craziness. It's a battlefield out there. This is the fortress. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid us and help us. Amen. As it relates to some of the things that we have to get rid of. <coughs> so hadith collected by Imam Bukhari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, where the Prophet said, 
لا يخنون لنا من حكومة أخوان يستحزنا الحرف والحرير والخمر والمعازف This hadith from the Dubai Imam Bukhari Listen to this The Prophet Sallallahu said There will come a time when my Ummah will make illicit sexual intercourse permissible meaning having intercourse with women permissible or in the opposite the women having intercourse with men it's going to come a time when he said my woman is going to make this permissible people aren't going to be married the Muslims are going to involve themselves in zina like it's okay like it's okay and then they come to the masjid and say to the imam make a halal for me after you've been in the cookie jar? And he said, and silk. Yeah? For a man to wear silk, not all women, for a man to wear silk is haram in this land. In the hereafter, inshallah ta'ala, your clothing is going to be made out of silk. Or for a man to wear silk in this life, why? Because silk makes him arrogant. You know, that good material is real expensive. He starts to hold his nose up and look down on people. Now he starts to feel like he's better, he's somebody, because he's wearing silk garment. It's not for you now. And he said, Muhammad. Some of the people misunderstand the word Muhammad. And they say, oh, this is alcohol. No, this is intoxicants. It means any intoxicant. Cocaine, crack, dope, uh, wet, reefer, all those different types, taking pain pills, oolies, whatever you want to call it. All that stuff, haram, 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 haram. Anything that's going to alter your senses and take you away from here. LSD, anything. The Prophet said, his womb is going to make it permissible. That's something to think about. Because I know some Muslims that have gone to jail in recent times for selling a set. They call it the set. Purpose set, this set, that set. The Muslims selling pills, man. They sling it. I don't believe that. The Muslims pushing all types of reefer. The Muslims are, are putting reefer in cigarettes and dipping it in, in bombing fluid. Angel dust. Smoking. Muslims, the Muslim. See, the Muslim making it hot out, it's okay. And they don't feel anything in their heart from doing it. Like it's okay, it's all right. He can hide. <laughs> Why are you messing with me? He can hide. He Muslim. That's the dalil for the, 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 the uh, dalil for, for getting high is the other Muslim is doing it. He does it. The Muslims got these hookah spots and, and, and they allow the, the, the people to bring their brown bags. Bring your own brown bag. So they bring their own alcohol. It's bad enough that they're smoking that stuff. That's haram. And then they want to you know, have drinks and stuff. And invite the kufar. We're supposed to be the people setting presidents, you know, setting the, the, the uh, stage, man. Showing the people what's right and wrong. And we sitting at the table, drinking with them, getting high with them, fornicating with them and everything. But they had this high opinion of you. Now you made yourself as low as the dog. And then the Prophet said, said that music, there's no such thing as halal music. Stop allowing these misguided Muslims to trick you by using words. Muslim music. They say, well, if you put Muslim in front of it and then music after it, it's halal. If you put halal in front of it and then music come after it, it's halal music. There is no such thing as halal music. Every single bit of it is haram. Now, you know, Jamie, you know, Allah Ta'ala. He said, music is the Qur'an of shaitan. Music is the Qur'an of shaitan. Now we got to think, what is it that we do with the Qur'an? We memorize it. Well, like the people who listen to music, they memorize the words. They memorize the beats. Now, 
So what else we do with the Quran? We memorize it, we recite it. The people listen to music, that's what they do. They listen to it, they memorize it, and you hear them on the streets, that filthy rap. You hear them singing these filthy songs. That's what they do. What's the other thing we do with the Quran that we have to do? Because it's not just a book that we read and we memorize. Well, I'm going to be here. We have to act upon it. So you find the Muslims reciting and memorizing the Quran and acting upon it. You find the people who listen to music, even if they're Muslims, memorizing the music, the words, now nah, reciting it and acting upon what they have recited. It's the Quran of Shaitan. These things we have to remove from ourselves in order for us to be better. This is why the Sheikh said, we have to accustom our souls to striving for that which is right. I mean, you gotta make yourself, man. You may have to leave places, people and things in order to save your own soul. Now, your true friends that you have here and there, you say, listen man, I, I, I gotta cut you loose. Cause I could die at any time. You got time to be playing around. Allah Azza wa Jal didn't give me a time schedule. He said in the Quran, Kullu nafsin that comes from mouth. Every man has to taste death. He didn't tell me where I was gonna die. He didn't tell me what time I was gonna die. And he didn't tell me how I was gonna die. I don't have time to mess around with you. If he's a real friend, and he's not Muslim, or if he is Muslim, when you leave, he gonna say, wait man, I'm with you. That makes sense. We both gotta stop this foolishness. We both gotta strive to be better. In our, in, in, in our Islam, it has to stop. And we ask that Allah to aid us in striving for his sake. Amen. This hadith that was presented by Sheikh Al Bani and Sheikh Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, where it was alleged that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La yadinu hadakum hadda yakuna tawadu taba'in li jitu bi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, He is not a believer, or, or, or he truly doesn't believe, or one of you truly doesn't believe until his desires are in line with what I came with. Now, Shaykh al Bani, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said this hadith is da'if. The hadith can't be used. But Shaykh al Bani, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, the hadith is da'if, but the meaning is true. Now, that you are not truly a believer. The meaning is true. You're not truly a believer until your desires are inclined to that which the Prophet وسلم, came with. That's, re that's the religion. That's the religion. Now, if your desires aren't inclined or connected or following the Sunnah, yeah, you're going to have difficulty. You're not from among those people who believe. Meaning that your belief is is, is uh, camel, complete. If that's the case, then the person's faith is deficient. He has a deficiency in his belief. <laughs> now, so in order for us to be better, now, and to begin to raise ourselves up from the positions that we sit, our desire has to be inclined to the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the righteous predecessor. Now we're on our way. And it's not just something that we say, it's something that we do. I hope that's understood. It's something that we have to do. Iman is a tazdeek al kalb wa tawla ala nisaan wa amru al jawarih. That's Iman. Iman is the, 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 the belief in the heart, the statement on the tongue, and the action on the limb. This makes a person's Iman complete. Acting upon what he believes, acting upon what he knows, and what she knows to be true. 
We ask that Allah to watch out to aid us and make us from among those who and make it easy for us to accustom our souls to doing that which is right. I mean, subhanAllah, I'm going to